So with your convex mirror, your radius of curvature is actually behind the mirror, behind the surface where we'll be looking. So we're to look at the surface we're looking at from the right, or from the left here to the right, is gonna be the convex surface. And so your radius of curvature is back there, which means your focal distance is actually back behind the mirror as well, which is kind of a little funny thing. So, but we can do the same kind of thing here. So in this case, it's a nice situation with a convex mirror, is it doesn't matter if you're you know, within or beyond a focal distance from the mirror or anything like that, it is irrelevant. This is one situation here. You know, the concave mirror, we really had two situations, whether you're within the focal distance or beyond the focal distance, and then even beyond the focal distance, you had, are you past the radius curvature or still within the radius curvature? So it's really kind of even three situations. But with your convex mirror, there is only one situation. So it never changes. We'll see how this works. So we're going to draw some light rays, and the first one we're going to draw is, again, one coming in parallel to the principal axis. And then normally, where did those go from there? They were reflected to the focal point. Well, in this case, the focal point's on the other side of the mirror, so we're going to have rays come as if they'd come from the focal point. Okay, now where's the next ray? We draw it towards the focal point. <laughs> So in this case, I'm heading right for that point, and then I bump into the mirror, and where does that one get reflected back? Parallel to the principal axis. And then if I wanted to, I could draw one more, and that's to the vertex on the principal axis, and that one just gets reflected at exactly the same angle. And so what do you notice? Yeah, these light rays never really converge, so there's no real image but they appear as if they might have come from a common point back here. Right there. And so did they really, did the light rays really intersect back there behind the mirror? No. And so it's a virtual image. So, and in this case, your object was above the principal axis and your image is above the principal axis. So also what kind of images does that imply? Yeah, it's upright. And like we said, virtual and upright always go together. If you know it's virtual, you know it's upright. If you know it's upright, you know it's virtual. Cool. If you also notice, does that image look like it's going to be bigger or smaller? Yeah, looks like it's going to be much smaller than the original object. And you find that this is always true. So these kind of mirrors, I brought some props here today. We're gonna look at spherical mirrors, sometimes called curved mirrors, and then we're gonna look at thin lenses as well. But the mirrors are gonna be the foundation for how we look at that. Uh, there's two types of mirrors you need to look at. We call them concave and convex. So, and they're named after the surface of the mirror that you're actually looking at. So that you're seeing some sort of reflection in. So I've got a concave mirror here. I've got the convex one here. If you look, if I turn this one sideways, which I can't obviously, it's taped up to the wall here. So, but which one could you kind of crawl into as a cave, so to speak? The concave one, hence the name. So if you get concave and convex mixed up, get it straight in your head. Um, if we take a look at this convex mirror first, where do you see a convex mirror like this one oftentimes? So you might see it on a bus. So you might see it in stores like a Circle K or a convenience store or something like that. What's the purpose of this, in a, say at a convenience store? It gives a big, wide open spectrum of the store at the same time to keep you from stealing. stealing stuff. This is so the person working at the convenience store can see wide field of view, see across multiple aisles at the same time and keep you from stealing stuff. We use them as security mirrors. Where else do we find these though? Common everyday use, what's that? So sometimes in hallways, serve the same kind of purpose. So your car. So if you notice, your passenger side rear view mirror often says what's written on the bottom? Yeah, objects are closer than they may appear or something like that, right? Because everything in one of these lovely convex mirrors appears farther away than it actually is. So did I get that backwards on the convex mirror with the car? Objects are closer than they may appear? No, I think I get that right. So, okay, I don't know if I said it backwards the first time, sorry. Um, but cool, what you should realize is everything does look indeed farther away with these convex mirrors. Also one other thing to note, when you look at this, and Terry, you're the closest, are things upside down or right side up? Upside down or right side up? Upside down or right side up? 
good. They're always right side up. You'll find with a convex mirror, it does not matter how close or far from this thing the object is placed. You always get an upright image. And we'll find out later that upright always goes with virtual. So for a convex mirror, you always get an upright virtual image. And things always appear smaller than they really are. Cool? So that makes it easy for these. The other type of mirror here, so is your concave mirror. And unfortunately with your concave mirror, we can't just make one blanket statement. So it turns out, it all depends on which side the object is placed based on the focal length. So your focal length, if you notice, these are spherical, and you could say they have some sort of curvature associated with them. If we can actually find that radius of curvature, half of that radius away from the center of the mirror. So if the radius was yay far out, halfway to that point, that would be your focal distance. So your focal distance is half your radius of curvature. And it turns out, if you're beyond that focal distance, we have one situation. If you're closer than that focal distance, or the object we're looking at is closer than that focal distance, we have a different situation. I need you all to line up right down the center behind me. So hopefully you guys can kind of get an idea. Right now we are beyond the focal distance. And if you can see what's going on there, what do you see? Yeah, we're all upside down. As I go closer, I get bigger, I get bigger, I get bigger. And then all of a sudden everything just goes crazy and I can't see anything. I see like a flesh color and I see nothing. It means I'm at the focal distance. Their image shows up at infinity at the focal distance. But once I move in a little closer, now I'm right side up and I'm pretty big and I can see every blemish and wrinkle on my face. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sweet. I'll let you guys all kind of see that. So stop right when your image kind of goes crazy. That's when you're at the focal distance.